Thank you very much for your kind introduction, Frank. <laughs> dear Professor Yu, dear Stefan, thank you for organizing this meeting. I hope you are ready for this rapid fire review. And there's no doubt that multimodal imaging is required for precise diagnostics and monitoring um, in ge patients with geographic atrophy for um, follow up and diagnostics. But now we want to focus on one part of the puzzle, which is blue light fundus autofluorescence imaging. Advances in imaging technologies now allow to detect detailed high resolution fundus autofluorescence images, and these are the basis for early de disease detection. They give us clues for underlying pathologies and help us to identify prognostic biomarkers. Today, it is well reviewed that the GA progression rates are inter-individually highly variable, and a precise and reproducible tool to quantify GA progression is the autofluorescence-based measurement of atrophic areas, which was accepted by FDA and EMA as a structural primary outcome measure. So this was a milestone regarding the feasibility of GA interventional trials. And just to remind you, one of the prognostic factors for GA enlargement is the fundus autofluorescence pattern in the junctional zone of the geographic atrophy area. And from longitudinal natural history studies, we learned that different patterns are associated with significantly different progression rates. So here are marked in red the patterns that are associated with a higher progression rate. And we all know the trickling type being at the highest risk for progression. Besides the autofluorescence pattern, several other prognostic factors have been identified. And here are highlighted in yellow the factors that can be addressed using, sorry, using uh, fundus autofluorescence imaging by confocal scanning laser of thermoscopy in yellow. So these include uh, the location of the atrophic area, the focality, the lesion size, and also the bilaterality of the atrophic area. So we know that a patient who has geographic atrophy in one eye has a risk to develop geographic atrophy in the fellow eye within seven years. And one other point is the so-called directional kinetics, the directional spread of geographic atrophy. And we have to understand that the progression towards the periphery is faster than towards the fovea, which is kind of a physiological projection and leads us to the foveal sparing. And this fact leads us to the idea of therapeutic intervention. And this is uh, well imaged in this timeline. Slowing down the progression rate significantly gains important time for the patient by preservation of central visual function. So the clinical goals of GA intervention are to slow down photoreceptor and RPE cell loss, to preserve foveal function, and to avoid additional scotoma. The possible therapeutic targets are as diverse as, as the underlying pathological pathways. So due to the recent study results, we want to keep an eye on the complement cascade. The crucial clue to the involvement of a complement cascade mediated inflammation was found by means of the genome wide search and several, sorry, several variants in complement factor genes have been identified. So we have to take a look at the complement cascade. There are three different separate activation pathways of the complement cascade that converge with a cleavage of factor 3 into 3A and 3B, inducing inflammation, opsonization for phagocytosis, and cell lysis 
by activation of the membrane attack complex. So this is our innate immune system, usually active to defend bacteria, for example. But in case of AMD, variants in the complement cascade, variants in the uh, complement factor genes lead to an overactivation of the complement cascade. So several drugs have been in clinical trials that target complement inhibition. Some of the uh, studies ended up with negative study results. Some studies are still ongoing. But for two agents, we have recently reported positive phase three study results. And this is the Pexatacoplan as a three factor three inhibitor and the Avacincaptate Pigol as a factor five inhibitor. And this showed clinical meaningful reductions of the GA progression rate. And Pexetaplon already was approved by the FDA, and we may expect um, EMA approval for Europe in 2024. So this will be the first ever therapeutic option for the treatment of geographic atrophy. But besides our enthusiasm about the therapeutic option, we have to think about several questions um, regarding the therapy indication and the patient selection. Also, the treatment regimen, which was in the studies every month or every other month. And we need to define criteria for discontinuation. Uh, so we do expect a large number of patients that will now have to go into a therapy which have been controlled in larger um, timely uh, pattern before. So we will need to include um, AL, AI-based algorithms to tackle all the patient data in the diagnostics and patient management processes. And again, fundus autofluorescence imaging comes into play to exclude mas diseases masquerading geographic atrophy due to AMD. <clears throat> and just one more thought about patients with a coexistent type 1 macular neovascularization who might be at a very lo low risk for geographic atrophy enlargement. So I, I want to summarize autofluorescence imaging in patients with geographic atrophy allows to identify predictive factors for atrophy progression helps us to exclude differential diagnosis other than AMD, and provides an FDA-accepted primary outcome measure for clinical trials. Nevertheless, um, multimodal modal imaging is crucial, and the upcoming complement inhibition therapy may raise many new questions. So I thank you for your kind attention. <laughs>